Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Space Engineers. I did some work on this guy. As you can see. Um, it's looking kind of interesting. It's very, um, I don't know. This part I like. So, I decided I wanted that extra piston, right? To give us some extra reach. And we've achieved it. And instead of putting the piston, like, directly behind this one, which would have, um, essentially brought this, would have been the back of the piston. And then we would have needed another block for a conveyor or something on the back side, like we have here. So I basically just would have extended this back two more blocks, which isn't really a big deal. But anyway, I figured I wanted to see if I could do it with, like, snaking. So we actually have stacked pistons. But they work together, and they will double the extension of the previous one. So why don't we go ahead, repair bay, connector, reverse. And we can see this go. And I think... Is it this one that I have? It looks like I have that one set to go a lot faster than the bottom one. <laughs> Not sure why. And I don't know if this one extends all the way. I think that's maybe the reason. Do you? Yeah, this one looks like it could go out more. Is there any reason why I don't have it going out more? No. So right now it, like, just gets out the door. But why don't we make it go out a bit more? I didn't know it, um, I had room to spare, to be honest. Okay, so piston. Repair bay. Uh, we got our welder. We got our connector. Stage one. Where's... Conductor stage 2. Oh, it's yellow. Ha ha ha. Okay, so that one's max distance 5. So yeah, let's bring it out an extra, at least one block. So let's go to 7.5. So that should mean it clears by a block. Yeah. That's pretty good. And we could extend it further. I didn't realize I had limited that for... I don't know. Anyway, I th <laughs> thought I needed it <laughs> like that. Um, the grinders I relocated, they used to be attached to the floor, which I thought was okay. But then I was trying to work the conveyor system and hook it all up, and... I ended up having a bunch, anyway, snaking around, and I'll show you that in a second. But what I ended up doing with these guys is just attach them to the welders themselves. I also relocated the pistons of the welders, so I basically had to destroy the arms. I figured it wasn't worth trying to merge things back together. And I had a bunch of conveyors at both ends, so I didn't really see a way where I could detach this with a merge and then reattach it other than right at that one spot. So it wasn't really going to work, so I figured it was easier just to tear it down and rebuild them. So that's what I did. And yeah, this is what we got. So it works out quite well. Um, I also added a row of welders, which there's just room for. The one thing I do like about this thing is it's fairly compact. Everything's kind of just squished and just barely makes it through and yeah, anyway, so let's go ahead and let's go through it. There is some problems with it, which we'll probably find out here momentarily. But let's go ahead and in terms of docking, uh, we could automate it and there's various ways we could do it. Um, we could use sensors, as someone suggested. Now, you could do some tracking with sensors. Um, issue being, we'd have to put a bunch of sensors on our wings, so we'd have to find room for them. Second, um, we'd have to find a way of detecting the connector. So currently, uh, currently everything's a ship, so it's hard to differentiate between the connector, because it's a ship, and the door, which is a ship, and the rest of the station, which is a ship, so... We need some way of like targeting that connector. Maybe we could put a small landing gear on it and target target that. I'm not too sure. Okay, what do we have here? That's the connector. That's that. So I need piston welders. So I accidentally I did some testing. And I've got some stuff on Tortwing's bar here, which allows him to go through and basically operate this thing from inside the cockpit. So until we get it automated, that's kinda how we can use it. But yeah, there's other ways. I'm sure we could do it with programming. Uh, that's beyond me again. Um, but there might be some tracking or... I'm not sure what, how they do it. But I think they can use coordinates or the grid space to tell a ship to go somewhere. I'm not too, quite sure exactly how any of that works yet. But um, 
that's probably a lot more powerful using program box. Okay. All right. Actually, guys, while we're on the topic of programming um, and programming for space engineers specifically, I want to give a kind of a shout out to Bob, I think, in the comments. He has a channel. Um, it's, his channel is Pilot Error 42, and he's doing some space engineer programming videos. So that might be something that you guys are interested in. So I recommend checking it out. I will be checking them out myself for sure and seeing what I can learn. So yeah, I recommend you guys go check that out. And while I'm doing shout outs, also a shout out to I Eat Ponies, who if you've looked at my channel art for YouTube and Twitter, my Twitter icon, all that was made by I Eat Ponies. So big shout out to her. Thank you very much. All right, now back to the show. So theoretically, uh, so this one will bring us back and can watch that work. I really like that little S piston thing and we could change it now. What well, my goal was to get the pistons roughly at the same speed, which I failed. And just to see how fast we could pull him in without him being ripped to shreds. Okay. So the next thing I want to do now, this will help us figure out how we want to automate this. So the first thing on the bar is our repair bay pistons connector. So that's what we just did. The next thing is the advanced rotor. So that's what rotates us. Repair bay pistons. That's the side things that are going to come in for being the welders. And then I set up these grinders. So this is left arm basically, or the upper or no, wait, sorry, lower left. <laughs> so that will rotate the rotor. And then if we want to grind, we grind and that'll do the same for that one. So we can basically choose which arms we want to remove. And yeah, so Let's go ahead. Now, there's one issue, sort of. Um, when we're closed up, uh, this part of us does not get reached. However, I think... Let's test this. Take some damage, Totwing. Normally, this happens very regularly. Da -da -da. We need to know if you've got clearance everywhere. Okay. You're all beat up. Perfect. So there's welders on the connector itself. So once we rotate, these will be positioned basically right there. And we should probably have this um, this guy stick out just a little bit. Why don't we go ahead and do that? So piston. And this is going to be the yellow one. So let's change the minimum distance to... I don't know how much we can fudge it without affecting things, so let's just try 0.5. Oops. And then we have to move it, I think. Piston. And then come back. Okay, so now we're sticking out a little bit, and I could probably bring that down a bit more if we need to, if it causes problems up ahead, but I think we still should be okay. Only issue now would be if the grinders can reach a bit more of them or something. Okay, so yes, what I was saying, these don't get reached, right? They don't have... Man, it's dark. Um, they won't... There's no welders up there. However, there's welders right here, right now. So I think during the sequence, we should first turn... Oops. Nope. We should first turn on the welders, which I was hoping would be in range of that. So why don't we make it in range of that? All right, so let's get our pistons. These ones, we want the welders... And we want to bring down the max distance, so let's bring it down by 4.5 and reverse. Okay, so right there is actually pretty good. Does it tell us where we are? Like the the rotors? I can't tell if I'm... Okay, that's the outer edge right there. So that's currently at 4.5. Uh, ha ha ha. That will kill us, <laughs> as I have done before. Uh, let me make sure that's that's got it. Okay, so it didn't get this one. It, that only reaches one in. So we could bring it in a bit more, but I don't want to get too close. Like, I don't want Tortwing to get, like, ripped off. <laughs> you got ripped off! I don't want to get his, his little bits ripped off as he gets pulled in. So that will repair at least the tips of his wing. Okay, well, let's see if the other stuff gets addressed once he gets rotated. Okay, so the next thing... What do I want to do? Okay, so the pistons... And the rotor, I want to activate at the same time. Now, I might have messed things up a bit, what what I just did. But we sh we were able to <laughs> do both at the same time. And that's what I kind of want to do. Oh, God. 
Oh lord, that was so close. <laughs> so I'll have to speed up the rotation. But that actually got those little blocks that we had pro pro trouble with anyway, I think. Because as it was rotating, it was getting the clearance. So there we go. That should work. And it looks like we could probably bring that piston back. So let's do that. At least not to the 0.5. So piston. Now this is for that connector one. We probably don't need that much. So let's just go 0.1. There we go. And that actually allowed some more stuff to get to get reached. Okay, so there we go. We're in here. We're having a good time. Um, we'll probably turn off the welders at that point, and then you would decide which arms you want off. So let's... There's a problem with this, guys. This is where things fall apart. Um, so let's do his left... You rotated the wrong way, Torwing. Or I've labeled these wrong. Because the upper one is says his right hand. R upper right grinder. But clearly the upper one is... Left. Don't. <laughs> no problem. We will rename them. This is probably the easiest solution. Unless we really want to rotate left. We could fix it. Um, but... Okay, so... <laughs> back to third person. And we can show this working though. So let's take off... Why don't we just take off both hands? Do it. So we go 6, 8, bring those down. And then 9, 7, grind off his hands. Now that one's getting some armor, you can see. His right arm and his left arm, actually. But that's okay, that'll get put back on, I guess. <laughs> With the blueprint, but maybe we can fix that. That's probably because he's a little bit further in. Although... Okay, which one is... Nope. That one? That one did not reach. Oh. Okay, you're good. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> Stop it. Nope. Oh, I didn't quite reach that one. Um, whoops. <laughs> I forgot. I tried to fly, I guess, while I was in there. Oh, I know what I was doing. I was trying to hit shift, and I instead hit another button. Okay. <laughs> All right. Piston connector. Let's, I guess, move forward a bit. Point two. Oh, yeah. That was a little aggressive. <laughs> a little sloppy. It worked better the last time I tested it, to be honest. All right, so there we go. Turned you off. Ratchet you away. And there we go. We have no hands. Man, that looks weird. Very strange. Anyway don't know what that group was. I think that was a blueprint. So now we would pick what we want. Well, here we took off both hands, so we'd have to pick either both welders or both grinders. It will put those blocks back on that got grinded off, so that's not a problem. But the problem, let's go for... What do we want? Welders? What are we going to work on? Let's do welders. Okay. And then we turn the welders back on. And there we go. And now I get out. Because <laughs> that is going to take forever. 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 So this is why I added this fourth row. To see if that would help speed things up with these these welders. But I'm not even sure if they're reaching, to be honest. Yeah. Because I'm only seeing sparks come out of that one. And like... Oh, this one's got two working on it, at least. And that one only has the one. So yeah, this one's finishing quicker. I don't know if I can get close enough to see the progress. But I mean, you can see how slow it is based on the fact that that one hasn't even changed its state yet. Oh, ha! So that one's almost done. So that's not too terrible, I guess. It's also not reaching his, his cuffling. That's not good. How about you? 15%. 16%. <laughs> so, um, in terms of speed and efficiency, it's a lot quicker just to do it over at the old one. Because this is terrible. Um, what if I try to move the welders closer? Let's try that. Okay, so piston. Uh, or, or I guess there's a group. What do we want? The welders? So let's change the minimal distance to 0.6, and it's instantly going to squish, I think. Okay, that might be better. 
Can we get even closer? As long as it doesn't, like, crush him. Which, when it happens, it's basically too late. <laughs> too late! That's why we do this. Just in case, I guess. Although, usually, I just live with consequences of what happens. So that's probably okay. It would be nice if it was kind of, like, spring-loaded. Can you do that? Like, does it have a torque setting? That would be neat. Like, it just kind of squishes, but... Not with enough force to destroy, just with enough force to hug. Have a welding hug. Aww. What am I looking for? Pistons, welders. It doesn't have a torque. That would be nice. Ah, oh, I think, actually, I remember seeing someone recommend that on the forums. That it should have a torque kind of set, and it could be used as, like, suspension, basically. So that would be neat. Um, do we dare go closer? Closer, Clarice. Too close. Now, there's a point where he's going to explode. <laughs> um, I don't really want to get there. Let's leave it there. That looks pretty close. They're on his belly. So that's not... I mean, that's still going, so that's not really that great. Are you done yet? Like, you got to be almost done. Yep. Oh! Ow, my face! And can you reach... Still can't reach the cuffling. Uh, when we rotate back, it'll take care of it. Maybe. I don't know what you're trying to hit. Oh no, he's hitting it. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. We gotta put sensors on this. Actually, we could start that. Okay, so yeah, it can't reach that one. But it can slowly reach that. But ideally, we don't want those to get... Oh no, no, no! Oh, it happened. <laughs> I figured it was about to happen. That's okay. That's quicker than healing myself, sadly. Mm hmm. Anyway. Okay. So, sensor wars. I was thinking. Um. Ah! Made it. <laughs> Suck it! Alright. Um. So, what was happening? We weren't rotating fast enough. Oh, look. There's my little welder <laughs> spinning around. Um, if I hit both at the same time, I think we're okay. It should be okay opening. It was the closing. So I might be able to speed up rotation a bit. But if I do that, that'll affect the opening. So I can't speed it up too much, or then it will hit. Oh man, why are we so far away? Okay, let's get closer again. I don't know why I'm hitting the remote thing when I'm directly attached to the, the structure. So, welders, max distance. Let's bring it in, actually. Uh, if I have a block. So, right there. Is that better? I want to see if it'll reach this stuff. No. Do it. Do it. Touch it. Yes. Actually, those prongs, with the welder tips, I guess, can, like, stab into blocks quite a bit. So we could get, actually get a lot closer. Oh, there we go. We touched. I hit him. Good job. Okay, enough of that. Ow. Ow. I had it off. That's not fair. <laughs> I think that damage I might have sustained going into the cockpit. And it didn't register right away. All right, so sensor was. We want a sensor A to operate the doors. So that should be, basically the field should be right where I'm floating. And when a small ship enters this field, the door opens up and the connector comes out to meet it and maybe locks on when it detects it's close enough. So I think we could achieve that a few ways. So I was trying to think where we could put sensors. Um, I need an access hatch, please. Somewhere. Thank you. Since I just lost everything. Alright. Let's grab some of that. Some of that. Some of that. Uh, let's launch my drill into outer space. Goodbye. I already have one. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, I think we could stick some sensors here. Or here. Let's try something. Totting! Go away. Neon. Actually, I'll probably need you because I cannot build sensors in realistic mode because it takes like four trips to move the radio parts. 
why we need six of those in a tiny little sensor that couldn't possibly hold that much stuff is beyond me. This is way too high of cost for the sensor. <laughs> I did the math and there's no way those parts listed could fit inside the volume of this little guy. Anyway, I want to see something. If I put that there and rotate the this guy, does that sensor... Because it's going to be in the same area as this welder. I'm just wondering if it's going to cause any issues. Because I think that would be a nice sleek place for a sensor. Looks to be okay. Hasn't been ripped off or anything. You're ripped off. Now, if I leave that like so, when I go to rotate... So now he'd be rotated that way. So if this... Okay. So in order to not have to rename the grinders, basically, this should be the default position. And then when it's... When he gets in there and turns, he turns that way. Okay, good. But I actually need that rotated again. Reverse direction. So we'll have one sensor here to do that. I think from this distance, from there, we'll have it set up so it can detect out to here. And it's looking for small ships. When it detects that, it will trigger that first sequence. And then we'll have a sensor that can detect when this thing is close to the ship to basically lock onto it. And then once it locks onto it, it will start pulling it back and it will start up the next sequence. So I think that's how we'll do it. And if we put a... How did I orientate the other one? I'll just do it again. Let's do it like that, I guess. So down is the way we want. Put another one over there. Okay. So let me get those set up. Oh, glad we got double welders. <gasps> Be so fast. Give us some light, Totwing. Totwing. There we go. Alright, while he's doing that, what I want to do, I think, for our builds for the time being, because we're going to be moving stuff around quite a bit, I think. So I've separated this guy for the most part. I think he's still attached at the front end. But in case we ever want to move him again, or there's another reason, um... If I ever want to take a blueprint of the station, I don't really want this guy to be included in the blueprint. So I would like to be able to kind of separate him, take the blueprint, and then reattach him. So I think for all of our little things that we build, they're going to be kind of modular and for the time being, in meaning that they can be disconnected at any time and then reconnected. So I gave this guy a little gate with a connector and then a couple merge blocks. So if we ever want to separate him again, we can attach our little tugger to this guy and then detach him there and then move him again if we want to or if I want to take the blueprint I simply separate him there also make sure he's not um, connected anywhere else and then I can take the blueprint because what I want to do essentially I want to get the ship from this height all the way down to the bottom layer with the thrusters kind of set and once we get that done, we're going to start replicating the rest of the station. So once we get kind of this one quarter kind of done from here up to this first floor, not necessarily the outer hull, but the, probably the bottom hull, or at least the thruster locations. And then the outside we don't have to worry about because we could still kind of get. I'm trying to figure out how the best way to do this with using our crane idea. So we still got to build the crane. But once we, we kind of have to build, I think, from the bottom up or from one direction up, because otherwise we'll have to like have a crane that can hook out and go underneath, and that's just not going to be worth it. So if we're just going to use the idea of have a line of welders that kind of rotates around to weld stuff, um, we'll have to do it in like sections from the bottom up. And then if we want to do the next section the same way, we still can. We just lift everything up and do it again. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. So that's why I want these guys to be separate. Because I figure once we get everything done in this corridor from here down, I want to be able to take that blueprint, rotate it around, and start welding it without creating more of these guys by accident or something. Okay, so that should be done. Before we return to him, um, I was playing around with the gravity. I changed things a little bit. Um, I don't like it. <laughs> uh, oh, the gravities are off. Let's turn them on gravity 
So I figured out a different way of doing it. Um, if I have both gravity generators on, and instead of having two sensors, I have... It looks like they're off as well. Instead of having one sensor there, I have two sensors. So if I turn those on, it works pretty much the same way. We stand here, we have four Gs, but the gravity up there is basically the same as this this guy. So I guess uh, grab, lift. Let's turn these on. Show on HUD. Uh, info. So yeah, if you need to get those things, because this can be kind of confusing, because you have to turn them on. Show on HUD. Then you have to show sensory field, show gravity range. You also have to make sure you have an antenna on your thing. So there's often people wondering why this stuff doesn't show up. So in case you're one of those, this is why. You need to have everything set. All right, so there you go. There's a sensor there at the bottom. There's a sensor at the top. And there's a gravity field. So right now, I'm not in the gravity field that points up. And if I were to go in there, um, like if I back up and fly up here, you can see there's no gravity. That's because the gravity generators are of equal magnitude. So in this middle section where they overlap, there's absolutely no gravity. Now, that would be great if I could just push off and jump and leave and it wouldn't turn on my silly jetpack and dampers. But it does. Okay. Shh, calm down. Okay, so if I go in here, what this happen what happens here is when you go into the gra the sensor field, it decreases the strength of the generator below me. So the one above ends up being stronger, so that dead zone is no longer a dead zone, and instead it gets 0.1 g of force going upwards. So that way I'm not moving as fast, so I won't take any damage. And then when I exit the field, it does what does it do? It increases the other one. And then this guy does the opposite. So when you... <laughs> kind of confusing. When you... Let's take a look at it. Um, sensor. Oh, let's just go grav, lift. Okay, so sensor at the bottom. Upper, lower. So yeah, when I leave... When I enter the field, it decreases that field. So then the strength is stronger, so I start to head up. And then when I leave that field, it also it increases the strength of the top one, which also makes me want to go up. And the only reason I have this here is to basically undo this. So this one says decrease, right? This was its increase. But we here we have gravity bottom, here we have gravity top. But in the other sensor, we have the opposite. So in the upper one, when you enter the field, it decreases that upper one. So when we left the lower field, it increased it. But as soon as we enter that field, it decreases it again. So the net change is zero. And then this guy increases the bottom one. So when we had entered that one, it had decreased this one. And then as we exit that second field, it increases. So when we get to the other side, we end up with everything being back to the, the way it was. So we still have a dead zone in the middle and all that. So for the most part, it works flawlessly, right? However... If we were to ever not go through both fields, we would break it. So if I were to run away this way, I went in that field and exited that field, but I did not get up there to reset it. I think I at least... No, no, I don't even think I did that. But I guess if I just fly through it even and do that, now the gravity's messed up and it won't correct itself unless I go through this field. So it kind of works, but it's limited in the sense that you got to do it right. So we might be able to set it up in such a way, I don't know, like some fail safes with some other sensors. So I don't want this stuff to be on all the time anyway. I only want gravity anywhere if it detects me. So even on these walkways, if we put gravity, I want there to be sensors built in. So they're only active when you're walking on them. So same with these guys. I don't want them to be active all the time. I'd rather they be triggered once when we want to go and use them. So anyway, that's where that is. It's better. But, oh, I didn't, there's a group. I could have used that. Haha, -ha, fool. But anyway, back to the other sensors. Oh, shh. <laughs> All right, guys, we're kind of running low on time and I'm probably over in time. Apologies, apologies. I will get these under 30 minutes eventually. Um. <laughs> Okay, so we have stage one, stage two. We'll just get this going. We won't get it too far. And then we'll... F I'll get it maybe polished and finished for the next episode, or we'll come back to it later. So let's do one at a time. We're going to show on field. We know that the top of the field is going 
that way, basically, away. So, almost towards that way, that way. Vector, eh. okay. <laughs> so essentially, bottom, top we don't need, right? Because the top is going in a direction we don't want. So I can actually probably do both of these mostly at the same time. They'll probably be different a little bit, but the bottom one is the one we're going to have to play around with. Right, left, we could probably just get rid of. Uh, front we can get rid of, so front is this way, away from the thing. We don't need that, because we just want to feel basically in line with this connector. Behind it, we probably want, um, but we don't need that much. So we could probably just put that to like 2.5, and that should make it go all the way and cover just to the edge of that that guy. And then left and right, so if we did actually 1.25 and 1.25, so a, a large block is 2.5 block or 2.5 meters. So if you have a, a sensor in the middle, the distance from the center to the edge is going to be 1.25, right? Yes. <laughs> Make sure I'm correct before I speak. So that's what I'm doing there. So that means it should theoretically just encompass this. It will stick out, however, like a, a meter out because we can't we can't make it less than a meter. I wish we could. I wish we could make it like zero. Okay, these are going to detect smaller ships. Yes, yes. Okay, so if we exit that, we should see we have a little field and no frames. And it is going back quite a bit. So did I do that wrong? Oh no, we're dealing with this one. I thought I was tweaking the sense <laughs> settings of that one, but I was, but this is the one we showed. So you can see that one sticks out that way. And if we do the next one, let's um, just put them both on. So there you go. There's a bit of overlap, but this is the area that we're concerned with. So now we're going to stick that... We're going to stick one of them way out to reach where we want. So that would be stage one. So that's roughly, if we look here, we've got one block, two block, three block, four block, five block, six blocks, seven blocks, maybe eight or do we want seven? I guess we want seven. We only want it to start operating when it, this thing will actually reach the ship, right? So if a ship is flying out here, we don't want it to activate and come out to meet it. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I lost count, because I'm an idiot. Four, five, <laughs> really? Four, five, six, seven. So yeah, let's go seven blocks. So it'll be seven times 2.5, which is... 17 and a half, maybe, something. Okay, so sensors, stage one. So bottom extend 17 and something, what did I say? 17 and a half. But also we need half of a block. So 17 and a half plus 1.25, blah, blah, blah. Let's just go 19. Is that right? And the other one, we're going to want the opposite. We don't want much of anything there. So we want a little bit less than what it already has, I think. So let's just try 2.5. So we have that sensor. Once a ship is there, this thing's going to try to connect to it. And we might need to shrink it down a little bit. And then this guy is going to detect the ship and start moving forward. So let's just try that real quick, and we'll end the video there. Okay, I think I got it set up just kind of crudely. So I have the one sensor here. I grouped up the piston doors, so the pistons for the door and the pistons for the connectors. So they're all set to reverse as soon as we enter this field. And then the other one's set to lock once it detects us. So we would still have to fly in relatively right and position ourselves in the right spot. So that's hopefully if we can keep that sensor field narrow, we know when we're in the right spot when things start happening. And we could probably make it a little bit better of a way to get in, maybe even a landing pad here to line ourselves up on. And again, we could probably look at programming and auto-docking with that maybe later on. Alright. Doot. So right about there, looks like that should be good. So when we back up, door should open. Piston's coming out. Pretty cool. And let's see if it tries to lock a little too early. Yeah, I think it did. Way too early. And then it's pushing us. <laughs> okay, so let's... Um, piston, connector, reverse. Uh, let's go sensor. 
stage two. And let's just shrink that all the way down, and hopefully that's enough. And try again. Piston connector reverse. Come on, come on, come on. Do it, do it, do it. Oh, actually, it's too. It's not enough now. So that's good, though. That means it it should be able to be enough. <laughs> so one's not enough. Two was too much. So why don't we go 1.5? And it locked. Okay, but let's uh, try again. So I'll piston. Oops. Uh, I don't want totaling. Connector. Reverse. Good. Reverse. Oh. Damn. So close. Okay. <laughs> One point two five. Is it even like... I wish you could see if it's um, detecting anything at the moment. Okay. Why don't we... Oh, I know what we could do. Let's start low, and then I guess we see when it locks. Locked. <laughs> that, that, that was a bad test. All right. Well, um, well, that looks pretty good, actually. Anyway, we'll see if I can get that just about right. The last thing I wanted to brush up on you guys, and I was talking about it, and then I kind of um, interrupted myself or got a little bit sidetracked, which I do. So to go along with that, I kind of want to have a computer room somewhere, as I think it was um, Crooked Star who recommended in our last series. So what I was thinking is we could, for the time being, do something like that and set up little m merge sticks. And then on there, we had put our timer blocks. Do, 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 do. Because timer's kind of a pain to set up. But I like the idea of having a kind of a centralized area for all this stuff. But I don't know where to put it yet, so maybe we can relocate it later. So I'm probably going to use timer blocks to operate all this stuff because it'll be easier for me to do that than the programming. So I'm thinking we could do something like that. So we'd have a little, almost, a timer stick. And then we could put a merge block on this guy at the top of him or somewhere. And then we could pick him up with that guy, bring him over, and relocate the memory stick somewhere else if we want. That way we keep all the settings intact, but we could reloc relocate it somewhere else. And then for every contraption we have... We'd have like a memory stick almost of timer stuff that we could just plug in somewhere. So I thought that might be interesting, assuming everything keeps working when you unmerge it and merge it back together like that. I have to test that. I made some small changes to this guy, add in the second battery, move the gyroscope up to the front. So that kind of brought the center of mass roughly to the center of the ship, which is nice. And then I added in a camera at the bottom. Um, I put the cockpit here, but really, you can't really see the merge block. Oh, I can see it. <laughs> but uh, through the camera you can see quite nicely so if we did ever want to whenever we want to dock it's a lot easier to do so except my um, my batteries are, are off there we go no it's not it's fine alright guys take it easy see you next time Why no fit? Bam. We're probably like incredibly crooked. Oh yeah. I don't want to merge anyway. Psh, psh. I know it's low. That's why I was facing the sun. Okay? I just wanted to show him something. But God. There you go. Bask. Happy Tugger.